This video is a follow-up to the normal map to mesh feature video where we took a low polygon UV mapped model from the paint workspace and sent a copy of it to the sculpt workspace for our high poly version. And in the process, we had 3D Coat bake the normal map information into the high poly mesh. And we can use that as a basis to perform some additional sculpting edits. So let's go ahead and get started. This is our result after the baking. And if I needed a higher level of resolution, I could go back and retry the bake with a higher subdivision level. But this will suffice for demonstration purposes. So now I have the color that's baked in also, and that can help to delineate the stones from the mortar. What I am going to do is take a blank layer that I've created here and I've named it color overlay and I will paint a simple clay color to it as an overlay so I can blend between it and the original stonework texture that was baked into the model. If I try to use the painting tools here, you'll see what will happen. It disappears. And that's because it's the same thing as going to the paint workspace. If I don't have this option chosen, show voxels in painting room, then I won't see it in the sculpt workspace either. Okay, so we need to make sure to check that. So I'm going to use the fill brush to where I can just click on an object to fill it. In the sculpt workspace, we don't have the same foreground, background color swatch that we do in the paint workspace, at least not as of this recording. I requested it from development, so hopefully it will soon be added in a future build. In the meantime, whenever we are painting in the Sculpt Workspace, we can always have the color palette docked in the user interface. Let's go to the Windows menu under Panels, and we can find the color palette and the color swatches, whichever we prefer to use. If you use the paint tools frequently here in the Sculpt Workspace, you can always assign a hotkey to the color palette to bring it right to your cursor anytime you want. To make that assignment, simply hover your cursor over the menu item and then hit the end key. In the toolbar, you have the different channels that are available to paint with. Depth, color, and glossiness. We also have metalness if we want to use that. But in this case, I don't need glossiness and I don't need depth, just color. Okay? And I need to make sure that in the tool options panel, I have fill with color selected. When I click on an object, the first time I click on it, I'll see a highlight. This object already happened to be pre-selected, so that's why you did not see a highlight this time. When I click on the next object, you'll see the first click highlights it, so I know exactly what was picked. If I click a second time, it will go ahead and fill it with color. Okay, I'll do the same thing here. Okay, with that done, I can now reduce the opacity of that color. Let's try 50%. And as I said before, this will allow me to blend the clay color with the original stonework texture. This allows me to see the depth more clearly while I'm sculpting, but also have enough of the original texture to see exactly where the stones are and where the mortar is that surrounds them. I'm going to increase the color overlay to 100%. Let's hide the other objects. I'm starting off with the extrude brush because unlike a clay brush or some type of flattening brush, it doesn't produce any sort of effect to the brush stroke. It simply extrudes as the name implies from the surface. And that includes the very small details. So they are not degraded in the process. From this point forward, while sculpting, I'm going to provide snippets that are sped up in order to keep this video as short and concise as possible. Add another layer on top. 
and name this added depth. I decided to add another layer on top so that when I use a clay brush, which has a flattening type of effect, I can still go back and blend that with the layer beneath so that I maintain some of the high frequency noise along with the uh, flattening of the clay brush. All right, there's a lot more that I could do to make this model more believable and realistic, but it should suffice for demonstration purposes what the sculpt edit phase might look like. In the next video, we are going to go over the process of taking this sculpt mesh and baking the sculpting edits back onto the original low polygon paint mesh. So stay tuned and we'll see you then.